What is up guys? Welcome back to DCS World. Welcome back aboard the Hornet for another video. In this one we're going to expand on the previous video on the SA page data link and IFF and we're going to add in a couple of uh, topics here. Namely we're going to talk about latent track well scan LTWIS and we're going to talk about MSI for LTWIS multi-sensor integration. Now for uh, as before, we want to make sure our IFF and data link is on and we want to have our SA page up over here and I'm just going to kind of zoom in. Actually, let's look at the radar page specifically for right now and hold it right there. So we're looking at our radar format page here. Most of this symbology now should be pretty familiar to you. Let me back out of data. Our contacts with LTWIS off and MSI off just show up as radar bricks and we can't even IFF them effectively here without things like LTWIS and MSI turned on. We can however lock them up. If I do it right, there we go. And I've locked up a friendly with that one. If I go back over here and I lock this guy up, this one's a hostile because we see the HAFU symbology on our launch and steering information. However, if I go into the data page of the radar and I toggle on LTWS here, LTWIS. Now this will be on by default, as will MSI, but I have them turned off here just to show you what they do. If we turn on LTWIS, if you remember from the previous video, we now have the hover symbology that we had before. So if I just hover my cursor over a target, I now see if he is a friendly, and I can IFF him from here. Same with this guy, I can IFF him. IFF. These guys are hostiles. And we can see that information there. And we can also see their speed and altitude. Now, latent track well scan is a sub mode of range well search. So you can see we're in RWS range well search radar mode. Um, what LTWS does is it enables us to generate up to three track files. Now these are not track files in the same way that you would use in a full fat track well scan radar mode. Future video coming on that by the way. These are simply for building situational awareness. The, these track files that are generated from latent track while scan LTWIS are not accurate enough for weapons launch. So that is why we are unable to actually fire something like the AMRAM with an LTWS lock as opposed to a single target track. We want to get a target into an LTWS lock. We need to hover over it and then depress our TDC once. And now that has become our launch and steering target. If we go ahead and click on this guy now, he has become what is called our DT2. And if I go over here and I chomp on this guy, he is now our DT2. So what do those mean? Launch and steering is your primary target. It is the primary target that you have in the LTWS, what I like to call a soft lock. And then you also have the second target, DT2, designated target number two, set up. Now if I unpause my camera and I look up at the HUD, we actually have a target diamond box on the HUD now. Okay? Now, one thing to just bear in mind again is, via this, we do not have enough accurate information for weapons launch. So, even though it looks like I could launch a missile with this symbology, because it is the similar AMRAM symbology that we're used to, um, it will switch to a, a single target track if I try to fire. And in fact, the only way I can fire in this mode is with a single target track. Let's look back down at the radar here. And I'm just going to unlock these targets. Now let's turn on MSI, multi-sensor integration. Full name is MSI for LTWIS. MSI enables a little bit more information. Notice when I turned MSI on, a few other symbols popped up onto my radar screen now. These are indicative of contacts that I can't see at all, but my offboard donor aircraft or other friendly fighters can see. They see these contacts, and now I am now projecting them onto my radar page 
for increased situational awareness. What it's in fact doing is it's taking the donor information that I have from my SA page, which we talked about in a previous video, and it's overlaying it onto my radar here. So this is very useful as you can see. Now that I actually see that contact, it becomes a regular hafu. These sort of smaller hafus indicate that these are targets that I cannot see at all with my radar, because they are either beaming me or something, they're outside of my radar range, whatever the case might be, but other aircraft and other donor sources are actually seeing it. And as they pop into my radar, they do also pop up. That is effectively what MSI for LTWIS does. And you're going to want these to be turned on at all times when you're doing air-to-air -air operations because the situational awareness that it affords you is just absolutely paramount and it, uh, it can save your bacon because you'll know, you'll know for a fact if you are looking at hostiles and friendlies in front of you, you'll have a very good idea of what they're doing, where they're going, how high, how high they are, how fast they're going, all of that good stuff. Now, one last thing I want to talk about that's uh, tangentially related to all of this is the air-to-air -air waypoint. So for a moment here, we need to go back to our uh, support page on this DDI. We're going to open up the HSI. We're going to go to the data button and we're going to select, let's say it's going to be waypoint two for me here. Now, waypoint two for me corresponds to the mission bullseye. And I can prove that to you by going to my F10 map page here. And if I turn on, let me just select my own aircraft and I turn on the waypoint um, symbols. Here's the mission bullseye here, noted by the blue circle, and waypoint two for my aircraft is on top of bullseye. Why is that important? Well, we can go here for the data page for waypoint two and select this option here, AA waypoint. If I toggle this, this tells the radar and the mission computer that that waypoint corresponds with the mission bullseye. We can go back to the SA page, or correction, let's go back to the radar. And what that enables me to do is it gives me some additional situational awareness information on my radar. And in fact, this also will show up on the SA page as well. Notice here, if I move my cursor around, we have some new data up here with a bearing and range information, what this is telling me is it's telling me where my cursor is looking, that position, it's telling me it's bull's information. So for example, where my cursor is looking in space right now would be at bull's 29 or 2 for 150. And that's useful because then I can say that a contact, this contact here, is at bull's 29 or 0 for 162. So this enables us to use bullseye calls from our own aircraft because that our aircraft knows where bulls is and it knows where contacts are in relation to bullseye. So it's just yet another piece of the situational awareness pie that's available to the Hornet. Okay guys, uh, I realize that was a bit of a mouthful. Uh, this video and the previous video are probably some of the most complex topics about the Hornet, um, but once you sort of break them down, uh, they aren't too bad at all. So um, for both of these videos, I am most certainly linking to Chuck's guide because it does have a full write-up. I do encourage you read about this to really familiarize yourself with this symbology as well as the functions of these different systems. Uh, and um, But uh, yeah, we will uh, see you for the next video. So take care.